happens within a local church. It happens within the universal church as a whole, but within specifically a local congregation where our spiritual gifts are put to work for each other's blessing and to show our obedience to Christ. And so he's saying, this has been handed down to you. You've got to defend it. You've got to hang on to it. Verse 4. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed. Anytime you have something where people are earnestly seeking to know God, know truth, that sort of thing, the enemy is going to bring in people who can benefit financially or get some kind of recognition personally for leading you a different direction. If you'll only buy their books, if you'll only do this, if you'll only come to their little Bible study at their house and don't tell anybody else about it because they won't understand. You see, we're going to be studying mysteries and things that the, those average people down at the church, they won't understand. But you're special. They begin to flatter you. They begin to say all these kinds of things. And they're trying to draw you into a place where they have special knowledge. See, this is heresy. This is the reason that you had to write. Already, in this short of a period of time, one of the largest, earliest heresies in the church had already come to pass. Jesus was sent by God but he was just a man. He wasn't made of the same stuff of God. He wasn't God in the flesh. No, in fact, Arianism is saying that he just has the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit on him in a special way. And so now we're going to reject the deity of Christ as a result of the teachings of Arius. And people begin to fall for it. Because it fit into their understanding of Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy said, all the spirit things are good. All the physical things are evil. And so Jesus is a physical thing. And so he cannot be God because he's a physical thing. And they took Jesus and they conformed Jesus to Greek mythology. You see, we make that mistake all the time. We make our Jesus to be kind of what we want him to be. And we begin to change the word of God. Certain people so crept in unnoticed. Those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation. Remember God does everything based on foreknowledge. He knows it all in advance. Ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness. Now, licentiousness, y'all used that word probably ten times this last week. Didn't you? That was the most licentious thing I think I have seen. No, you didn't use that word. Well, the idea is simply this. You take God's gracious love for us and you say it is a justification for sinful behavior. So I can live a sinful, licentious, a life where I think I have... You see the word license in there? A license. Like a driver's license? To be a licentious person means that I believe I have a license to sin. That it's okay. And that matches the Greek philosophy as well. The spirit's perfect. It can't be harmed in any way. The physical is evil. You can't do anything about it. And so up comes a group of people called the Gnostics. They have a special knowledge. It's connected to their Greek mysticism. And as they are involved in all of this, uh, even today, we have uh, groups of people, uh, men and folks who meet in halls and things, and you look in their literature, and it refers with praise to the Gnostics and to the, the, the temples of all of the false gods and all the things that we gain from that. Gnosticism is alive and well. It says that we are special, we have a special knowledge. If you'll come and be a part of what we do, then you'll have what you need to know to be in light and to know truth. Well, given all this stuff, he's saying these people are denying our only master and Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is the only one that is the truth, the way, the life, the light. 
And, and if your organization is equally supporting anybody of any religion so that regardless of any religious belief you have, you're all going to meet someday on the other side, then it denies the reality of Jesus as the only Savior. And so whether you find this in some organization or you find it in just a person's way of thinking, even those who have dealt with Boy Scouts, and I was a scout, I was in it and I loved it, got to the place where their idea of God became so generic that it didn't match anything that I was hearing in church anymore as, as a lost kid. Yeah, I did pay attention a little bit. And so you have to be careful of what that you're hearing and how you're being presented God. Notice, if you would, in 2 Peter 2, we're jumping over there for just a second. Peter says, false prophets also arose among the people just as there will also be false teachers among you. So here's Peter saying, look out. And here is Jude saying, they're here. If you look in uh, Jude chapter 5, sorry, chapter 5, verse 5. Now I desire to remind you, Peter does the same thing. I want to remind you of the faith. I want to remind you. I want to remind you. How many of us need to be reminded? You raise your hand. Yeah, I need to be reminded of truth. I, yeah, I need to be reminded. I desire to remind you, though you know all things once for all. You've got a Bible. You're learning it. You know the truth. That the Lord, after saving the people out of the land of Egypt, subsequently destroyed those who did not believe. All those people in the wilderness who didn't believe God could take them in and take the land of Canaan. Every one of them died. The people did not get to go into the land of Canaan until every one of those people who had not believed did die. It goes on to talk about there's people in opposition to God. Now verse 6, and angels who did not keep their own domain but abandoned their proper abode. He has kept an eternal... Oh. There we go. He has kept an eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. So now there's people who disobey. Here are angels who disobey. Then, verse 7, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them. Since in the same way, they, these indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh. In other words, men going after men, women going after women. That is what the Bible talks about, going after strange flesh. That that are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. And I don't, it doesn't matter LGBTQ. God loves them all, but unless they come to Christ and repent of their sin, just like I had to repent of my sin and to turn away from those things, they're going to spend eternity separated from God. Says who? The preacher? No. Says who? The Word of God. You read the book of Revelation, you'll see a list of people who are not going to be there. They're going to be in the lake of fire. And the scripture talks about that in many other places. Folks, if we don't defend the faith to our culture, we are condemning a whole generation of people who have bought into one singular lie that God made them in the way that they are and he doesn't want them to change. Do you know God is going to change every stinking thing about me? Everything. He is going to change my body to a resurrection body. He is going to change my thinking to thinking like Christ. It's still going to be me, but it's going to be the me that appears because Jesus is in control. Jesus is my life, and I'm not my own life. So if we push aside all of these other things that we say, they, they're just, that's the way they are. Folks, just the way I am is pretty horrible. I don't even want to begin to tell you about the things that have happened in my mind and in my flesh through my life. And by the way, I don't want to hear about yours either. <laughs> we're moving on. But we have to move on because we're being changed by Christ. And so... Here's the consequences of all these people who have not uh, responded to God in His work in their life. Notice in verse 8. Yet in the same way, these men also by dreaming. Okay? Oh, I had a dream. Okay? Let me tell you about my dream. 
Let me tell you about this special knowledge I have. Let me tell you about this vision I have. Let me tell you about the mysteries that I know. Let me tell you about all this. They defile the flesh. They reject authority. They revile angelic majesties. We're not going to spend a lot of time here. There's a whole other message here. When you don't recognize the, what's going on in the heavenlies the way God does and respond to it the way God would have you to, you're in danger. And these people are in danger. Notice in verse 10. These men revile things which they do not understand. And that's the problem. If you don't know and accept and live by the word of God, you may be reviling things. You may be reproaching things, including God, simply because you don't understand. And the things which they know by in instinct, like unreasoning animals, by these things they are destroyed. So they go on into their immorality, they go into their false teachings, and they work themselves to a place where they are so callous and so close to the truth. They'll never find their way back unless God shatters them and reaches in and pulls them out. Now notice, it says, woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. You see, Cain brought a bloodless sacrifice to God. And it wasn't acceptable. Abel's sacrifice was a sacrifice of blood. And for pay, they have rushed headlong into the era of Balaam. What did Balaam do? Well, come on over here, Balaam. Look, there's the children of Israel. And if you just curse them... We'll give you lots of money and, you know, resources and things like that. Well, no, God's told me I can't curse them. Well, let's walk over here and try it from over here. Let's go around the corner over here and try doing it. And so finally he says, well, look, he said, I can't curse them, but if you could get them to be sexually immoral, they would curse themselves. And so Balaam gives these enemies of the people of God information of how to cause them to stumble. And he does it for money. And people today are still out there. Lifeway stores are full of books and materials from people who are selling false teachings and false materials and they're doing it for money. You say, no, not in our old Baptist bookstores. Yes. You see, that's why you have to have such a, a grasp on the Word. Uh, I said something last week, and, and I may have upset some folks, and so I, I want to explain a little further. Right here is an article, 10 Reasons Why the Jesus is Calling series is a, is a dangerous book. Now, I'm going to clearly say some things here. If you are solid in Scripture, and you know the Word of God, you're going to reinterpret some of the things that are said by this lady in these materials in a way that keeps you orthodox. That's going to be a tendency that you're just going to have. If you're walking in the Lord, you'll do that. But if you don't know your word carefully, you're going to find yourself dealing with a lady whose greatest author hero was a woman who wrote a book called God Call. And in God Calling, she's basically doing something where she is describing how occultists channel a spiritual being from somewhere out in the spirit world they can't see. I think we have just a little uh, Google thing. We can throw up there maybe just jump over to that real quick. And what happens is is that people, rather than listening to the Word of God and, and understanding it according to what the Spirit of God teaches, they get somewhere and they get real still and they open their mind and they just try to get peaceful and calm and Jesus is going to show up and just talk to them. Now, if you Google channeling Jesus, what you're going to find is person after person after person, most of them women, who are saying that they get still and they get quiet and Jesus tells them things to tell other people. Folks, that's heresy. That is heresy. Channeling is something that is a part of psychics and mediums and all that sort of thing. And so as you, uh, let me just read for example here, uh, a comment that was given on this article. 
This person says, I'm glad to see this book is being called into question. I know some people get quite up in arms at the thought of it even being questioned, but I'd like to give my story as background. Please keep in mind that I'm not commenting on the writer's character. Also, I'm not a cessationist, which means this person doesn't believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have ended. I believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are alive and well and active today. I started following Jesus two years ago. You hear the spiritual immaturity doesn't know a lot yet maybe about their faith. Along with the Bible, two books I was given were God Calling and Jesus Calling. Being a new Christian, I didn't have the biblical knowledge to spot the heresies in God Calling. And thus I didn't find it odd that Jesus Calling used God Calling as its inspiration. I would wake up each morning and do exactly as Young did. Sit and listen. And lo and behold, I began hearing a small voice being introduced uh, itself as Jesus and spoke exactly the way Young's Jesus did. Before long, I was spending hours a day with this Jesus. It explained Bible verses. I could feel it as a presence just as Young claims to and like Young's experiences. I'd often feel this blissful feeling like Young. Sometimes I just sit and feel this feeling instead of listening I also started having dreams and was even told about events that would happen in the future. Nothing this Jesus ever said ever did directly contradict the Bible. In fact, most of it was said was true. Even a man was even healed with me praying to this Jesus. Over time, however, I began to notice things that didn't line up. For example, Young's Jesus was way too flattering to be the Christ of the Bible. Jesus was also placing his presence above the word of God. And lastly, this Jesus was acting in the role of the Holy Spirit, which didn't line up with Christ's own description of uh, his and the Holy Spirit's roles. As time went on, the messages became confusing. Like young, I found myself going back and changing things in my journal. This article shows many things that have been changed from book to book to book where she said Jesus told her this. The next edition, Jesus had changed to it.